Huh? Oh, I didn't ground it. Ta-da! Okay, I am going to finish this dagger today. So I got that little piece of thread welded onto the very end. That's great. And I ground down the side so that the guard can fit back on, which is perfect, but... Well... There's no but. It should work fine. So I ground both the flats so that the guard can fit on, but I haven't actually done this before let me make sure it does work how I think it does I'll test it out with making this piece of brass a nut so I need a tap so I'll drill a hole and make sure everything is looking that everything's making sense like it does work like I think it does I we shouldn't have a problem please don't slip that'll hurt my fingers a lot if it does oh that's what I was scared of I'm fine yeah, that's exactly why I didn't want to happen. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> why did I not expect that? There we go. I'm so smart. That's probably about the dumbest way to do that. Who's ready for a game called Don't Break the Tap? I'm really bad at that game. Don't they stop my tap wrench? Oh, is this it? If I break this... If I break this tap in a piece of glass, that would... Brass. That would be really impressive. It'd also be impressive if I could speak English. Oh my god. Okie dokie. Let's see. What I think will happen is with the guard and the handle... Which way is... That way. Which way? That way. <laughs> Okay, I do have that problem I need to fix. Um, okay, ignore that for now. But uh, when I th thread this on and it butts up against the block, it like, it stabilizes it. Like it's just pushing straight against it. So it's not gonna like wobble while it's already tightened. Does that, does that make sense? I probably didn't need to explain that. It's kind of obvious, but ugh. speaking of obvious, um, that, Little warp in there. Come on, focus. Yeah, the piece of all thread there is bent a lot. This is either gonna work perfectly and be really quick and easy or a disaster. And I'm down for it. Ooh, super close. Oh, did that, that did a lot more than I thought I would. Oh, I think we're good. I think we're all lined up. Nah, it's perfect. And you know what time it is? Because I don't. Let me think what I want to do right now. Um, so, let's make a little to-do list. This guard needs to be... A lot of something needs to happen to this guard. I need to do something with these stocks. This idea that I had, I don't think is going to work. If it was square, I think this kind of swoopy thing would look cool, but but with this being a rectangle, I, I don't think that would look good. I think just octagons and like, I don't know, something would look nice. Then this handle is actually super close to being finished. I just need to octagonalize it and that's it. And then this pommel, I, I need to make this pommel. I haven't done anything with the pommel yet. That's probably what I should start on. I need to make this a pommel now. I need to drill a hole, I need to tap that hole, get a fitting on there, and I'll go from there. How deep do I need to go? All right, so I can get this hole tapped now. And after I get this hole tapped, I want to start shaping this. That felt like a bad start. Now we're good. Yeah, perfect. To shape this uh, pommel, what I think I want to do is I'm probably just going to put this on, thread this onto the tang on this handle, and then kind of mark out from, mark on the wood straight onto this brass. After this hole is tapped, it's gonna be the interesting part because I don't know how deep 
I can go. Because all of this carving, all of th these angles and this, it's not difficult to do, but it's difficult to like find surfaces to walk off of. Oh God, that just blew right into my face. <laughs> no, I don't love doing this. Hopefully it doesn't cut it. It shouldn't cut it. Ooh, just be very gentle. I don't want to widen out these threads anymore. <laughs> Okay, now I'm cutting again. Should I put some liquid on this? I just feel like I should put some liquid on this. I'm not even sure why, I just feel like that's what I need to do. It's not squeaking, so that means it's helping. So, uh, I messed this up. Uh, I had a severe lapse in judgment. Since it was like rotated on the handle when I re-squared it, it's obviously not going to get wide enough and I need that width for, uh, I need that width for this section right here. I wasn't paying attention to that. So this isn't wide enough. I was trying to make it work, it won't. So I just need to try that again. Luckily, I do have more brass. I hopefully won't have to use this whole bar. Hopefully just one more little chunk off of it and I'll get it right this time. Okie dokie, it's time to octagonalize this handle. So for that, I need to, oh, I need to do math. I don't wanna do math. I can probably just look that up. I might not need to do math. Octagon calculator? <gasps> okay, so if I'm looking at this right, I need to go to Sonic and buy a big scoop cheesecake. I did it, I think I did it. So if I do 0.328 inches in, that is not right. Uh, what? It's definitely this. That was wrong. Oh, I need to divide that by two. Oh, I'm dumb. That's the radius, I did the diameter. That means A and B are 0.164. That seems more like it. Too bad I can't see anything, oh my god. Okay, now if I measure that new face, that should be 2.3? Yeah. So we got these sides squared off. Now I just want to come in with some burrs for the Dremel. One of these bad boys, probably this one.
Okay, I got that triangle on the very tip of the guard ground in. Now it's just some group fire. Now it's just some filing. Oh, and I made some test pieces. I'll show you those if you want. I made this one to figure out if I wanted to do this or that to the ends of these guards. I decided I want to do that. I also did a test piece for what finish I want to do on the guard. I'm going to be doing this, which is like a patina look, but there's still like some super shiny spots. Spots and there's still a lot of texture in there. I think it's really cool. I'm gonna be doing that to the guard and the pommel to all of the brass and I need to put this cap back on the sharpie and then I can start filing the, the, the little points. So this guard is looking super shiny now. And now I'm gonna work on the pommel. I'm terrified of doing this pommel because I'm worried I'm gonna mess up the octagonalization of it. But to do that octagonalization, I'm gonna put a bunch of hash marks all over this thing just to give me some lines to where I need to grind to. And then uh, I'll grind to those lines. Super complicated, I know. So it's actually been really nice to have uh, this little practice pommel, the one that I messed up. It's been really nice to have that just to make sure all my ideas are, are good ideas, that they'll actually look good, and to make sure that I am actually able to do all those cool ideas. So one of the things I'm just doing to make this more interesting is this groove on the bottom. And you can see with that finish, you get that black, that blackness that you like can't clean off, that adds a lot of texture and I think this finish is so cool, especially with little grooves that I can't clean so are naturally going to be like dark and dirty. It, it, it happens and it looks realistic and like old, but in a good way. So that groove starts 90 thousandths from the base. That's 89 and a half. 90, uh, is that right? I'm gonna go 100, 100 thou. End of the groove is going to be 200 thousandths. I guess 0.2 inches makes more sense. That's a little too far, honestly. I'll do 190. Last one, the last one, okay. All right, the guard and the pommel are looking really good. They're both at that mirror polish. And the reason I brought it up to this high of a finish before I completely ruin it is because a mirror polish is a really very obvious and very consistent finish. So I know that everything is the same before I start any of the weathering. Because with like a sanded finish, it's not always obvious that like everything is up to the same grit. You might have some, some tiny scratches from previous grits still in there. So having that mirror polish is it's very obvious to see when it's not right. And it's actually really easy to bring brass to this high of a finish. So, but it's not easy to take this handle off. What? Is this familiar? Because this handle isn't coming off again. Wow, it's not doing anything. I just have to use clamps like this very carefully. Oh my God, that's terrifying.
Does this stuff expire? Because it ain't hitting like it used to. Oh, that's just rubbing off. What? What did I do to this? It looked so pretty before. It's gonna look good. It's gonna look good. It's oh god, I almost knocked this over again. <laughs> oh god, this thing has almost fell over like five times. Yeah, yeah. That sound. It's making a weird sound. I don't like that. Yeah, it's like styrofoam. Why is it making that? Why is it, like noise? Yeah. It's making like a styrofoam, like squeaky. Yeah. Now I need steel wool. Where did I put steel wool? Did I put it away? I never put anything away. Okay, now I don't want to remove too much. I just want to remove enough to make it all pretty. So I think this is going to be pretty similar to weathering like with paint. And the best thing with that is to get it really dirty and then do like a mediocre job at cleaning it. And it's naturally going to like bring out highlights that look natural because all the high points are obviously going to get buffed and shiny a lot more. All the low points are going to stay super dirty and corroded. And I think that'll look best. Difficult thing is knowing when to stop. Like, is that good? I think that's good. Well, that's not good. Yeah, I need to re-etch this. Alrighty, that's it, but you have a safe drive home now. Okay, bye.